Hi, ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighbor, Tool Bear, back again here in the old Den of Tools. And today, the bear is going to answer all your questions regarding power. I've gotten lots of questions re recently about people like, what kind of prong is this? Can I use an adapter on this? Why Why is that prong, uh, why is that outlet upside down? Uh, what does this weird T-shaped plug mean? Well, I, I've decided that it's time to cover all this. Make sure we get it all ironed up. Make sure you're all safe. And you know what? You can plug into what? So let's jump into it. We're going to start with the most common first and work our way up. We're going to be talking about stuff that you're going to find at home, 120 and uh, 12240. We're not going to get into the super industrial stuff, just the stuff that you're most likely to see. So this right here, that is the quintessential NEMA 5-15. And what that means is... NEMA 5 means it's three-pronged grounded, and 15 means it's a 15-amp circuit. This is the most common uh, outlet you're going to see across North America. We're talking the United States, Canada, and probably most of Mexico. All right, now this plug has three main components. It's a three-prong adapter or three-prong outlet. You're going to have the larger one is going to be neutral. The smaller one is going to be the hot wire. And the little rounded one there, that's your ground. And that, that, that's there to help take any pesky you know, electrical pixies that get loose and just channel them right down into the ground and not like, say, maybe into your paw or something else. So the kind of plugs you're going to see using with this most commonly are your standard two-prong and three-prong. Sometimes they're referred to as two-blade or three blade uh and often what you'll see also is on especially a lot of the two prong is that one of them has a wider blade than the other that's called the polarized or a polarized blade and again that's a for shock protection trying to make sure that the, that all the electricity is flowing through the proper channels the way that the device is intended now i know somebody's going to ask before you ask why do they have holes in them well that's for weight savings and now i get okay, the bear kids the bear kids it's for retention uh, the older plugs used to actually actually have little ball bearings i believe inside them to help uh, fit in that detent to hold the plug in place these days there's just the the way the wires inside are pressed it helps hold the plug in and keep it from falling out i think they could come up with a better way oh they do have a better way but they don't use it in homes for some reason anyway move it on so this i know i get a lot of questions can i use a three-prong cheater plug in a two-prong adapter and and will it be safe will it be grounded so the way these these cheater plugs work is there's a little metal tab right down here on the bottom. Now what you're supposed to do is you take this bolt out, you plug it in, you run the bolt back in, holds it in place. The nice thing is it helps keep the plug from falling out because there's uh, extra distance there and leverage and stuff. But the reality is, will it give you a grounded outlet? And the answer is maybe it really depends on whether the outlet was already grounded to begin with. If the outlet in behind the plate doesn't have a ground wire on it, then putting that plug in place isn't going to make it grounded. It's just going to allow you to still plug it. I mean, yeah, you can still use it this way. Just be careful with it because you're not going to get that extra shock protection that the device is craving. All right, moving along. What about this? This is called a GFCI outlet, and you'll see this mostly in new construction. GFCI stands for ground fault circuit interrupter i believe and what this is where this is normally used is anywhere that there's going to be water and there could be a risk of splash on the outlet or something like that you're going to see this in bathrooms you're going to see it in kitchens maybe some laundry rooms uh maybe even outdoors if the plug has uh, a, a faucet near it or something like that and so basically anywhere you're going to see water, you're going to see one of these. And what that does is it adds an extra level of protection. There's actually a little breaker right inside that. You can even test it to make sure it works. Hit the little button to reset it. Now, often what I hear is, hey, Bear, I have an issue. One of the plugs like in my hallway or the light in my hallway or a closet or something else isn't working for some reason. It was working fine. It just stopped working. I replaced the bulb. I've checked all the breakers. It's not working. Well, here's what's happening often. These, these circuits will run through this plug, but they'll often then continue on to other plugs or outlets or, or switches around the house in that local vicinity. So if something's not working, go check your closest GFCI outlet and click on it and see if that resets it. Because nine times out of ten, that's usually the fix that I see. All right, now what about this one? Why are my plugs installed upside down? No, it doesn't mean you won the lottery and it doesn't mean that your uh, your electrician was drinking either. Probably, maybe. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that. But the fact of the matter is, first of all, let me clear this up. 
there are no regulations regarding upside down, right side up, all that kind of stuff. So there is technically no such thing as an upside down plug. However, you will often see specifically in newer construction in rooms where there is a switch that controls one of the plugs, all the other plugs will be quote unquote right side up and the switch, uh, the plug controlled by the switch will be upside down to indicate so you know, hey, that's the one where I can plug a light into so I can turn it on and off and maybe not to plug my CPAP into so the wife doesn't try to turn you on and off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, one thing that is said, though, a lot of people do feel that this is a safer connection. Say you've got a plug plugged in and it starts to wiggle itself loose. They they do. That's the thing that plugs do. Well, if something were to fall over and hit that, instead of falling and hitting the hot uh, wire right here, it would hit the ground first and maybe be a tad bit safer. Uh, just food for thought. OK. All right. Now, check this out. This would be great if we all started using these plugs. This is the NEMA L515. This is honestly the same as this three-prong plug. It's the same thing, does the same job. The only difference is this is a locking plug. It's, it's still a three-prong plug. It's still got a ground, and it still only carries 15 amps. It's just a locking plug, makes it a little bit safer, harder for things to pull out. The receptacle that you're going to find with this is going to look like this. Now, the only place I've really seen these used consistently are places like marinas where you have boats that are trying to draw shore power and they don't want the cable to come loose and fall down into the water or get eaten by seagulls. I don't know. Anyway, the point is that's where you see that because they can reach it across, lock it in place, the boat can move back and forth and it won't unplug the boat. So uh, if you've seen other places where that gets used, let me know down in the comments. I like to hear where other people are using these sorts of things. All right, now let's we've took that's pretty much it for 15 amp circuits. Let's jump up to 20 amp circuits. These are circuits you're going to see in the kitchen. You're going to see in the laundry room. You should probably see in the garage, and you should also see, hopefully for you, and your outdoor circuits as well. Now remember, just because a circuit is 20 amp, a lot of 15 amp outlets are run off of 20 amp circuits but that doesn't mean you can use 20 amp devices in those circuits it, it, it's a chain everything in that chain has to be rated to that top level it's always the lowest common denominator so don't don't go uh, <laughs> doing something stupid okay now that said this is an interesting plug because it's got that little t slot in it well what that does is that allows you to run say a regular two or three prong NEMA 15 on that as well as one of these weird looking suckers. Now this is a NEMA 5-20. This is a that exactly what it sounds. A NEMA 5 meaning it's three prongs. 20 means it's 20 amp and that's why it's got that little sideways plug in there. So you can't accidentally plug a 20 amp device into a 15 amp outlet. We wouldn't want any of that stuff to happen. That, that would be bad. <laughs> All right. Um, and let's see here. Moving on. We've got also, how about this? Uh, they're all, oh, and yes, I should mention there is a locking version of this plug as well. I, I don't have a picture of it. Sorry. So then next up, uh, we've got the 30 amp circuits. Now this one, you're not typically going to find in most houses, but some houses are wired for this. So we're going to talk about it. And this is qu their quintessential 30 amp RV plug. You got the plug on the right outlet on the left. Now, my family, we've got a 36-foot travel trailer, uh, and even though it's big for a travel trailer, it's still only a 30-amp service, and this is the kind of plug we deal with all the time. Uh, and one of the things you'll see a lot is you'll see these plugs and receptacles on a lot of generators. In fact, our favorite power station that we use, if we want to stay whisper quiet, because a lot of places, even though they don't provide power, they don't want you running a generator. Well, I can plug this in. I can still get my AC going because, you know, a bear need, needs his AC. <laughs> Got to keep that fur cool, right? Anyway, so this is the Blue Eddy AC 200 Max. Uh, and it's uh, got a 30 amp RV plug built right into it. I can plug the whole thing right into that. That is awesome. All right, now let's talk about another kind of plug here. This is, again, the same thing, just a slightly different. This is a NEMA 5-30. I've only ever seen this in like some commercial, like uh, medical equipment kind of stuff. Uh, 
And then there's also this one, which is the locking version of that. This is the L5-30. And I've only ever seen these as extension cords. I've never seen an actual wall outlet with one of these. If you have or you've seen these used other places, uh, let me know. Now we're going to jump up to the big boy of the 120s, and that is the NEMA 550. This is a 50 amp uh 110 circuit here now let's be clear this is not the, i know some people are going to say hey there's the rv 50 no this is not the 50 volt from the rv in fact i've never seen one of these used in a residence but maybe perhaps you might have some weird setup so i'm just to include these in case you happen to run across one so let that covers our 110s now let's talk about our 110 220s all right the first one we're going to talk about there is the 14-20 all right, now not a lot of applications for these, but you may see them. There's also a locking version of this. Uh, the uh, this is the NEMA L was L14. It's the 1420, and then there's the L14. The L means it's locking. All right, that makes it pretty easy there. And as you can see here, clear here, often used in extension cords as well. Now, clothes dryers, that's the first time in a house you're really going to see a lot of 220 being used. So let's jump over and talk about those. And this one right here, this is the NEMA 14 30. This is your quintessential home clothes dryer plug that you're going to see that when you pull out the dryer in the back, that's the plug you're often going to see. Uh, there is also a locking version of this plug. That's the L14 30. That's what that receptacle looks like right there. And then there's a locking version of the same one, the L14-30. There it is right now. It's a very circular kind of plug where one of them, the G uh, prong there, is the one that locks. It's the bent one there. All right. Now, moving up, let's talk about the 50, uh, the 50 amp service in 220, 110-220 there, 240. And this is your quintessential 50 amp rv plug all right this is the big boy often seen on the higher end travel trailers plus uh travel trailers we're going to see multiple ac units running a lot of fifth wheel stuff like that and then the receptacle is going to look just like this now some of these plugs may look similar to other plugs what they do is even if if they have the same kind of prong style they just scale up the size so no worry about actually plugging this into something else that it's not meant for now then there also is the 14-60 okay now the 14-60 and it uses this weird kind of flat one and here's the prong down here and some of you may recognize this because this is often used for evs i should also point out that some of these are often used for ovens as well all right so your, your higher end ovens and stuff like that need to draw that extra power they'll run off of something like that now we talked about generators before so let's jump over and let's look at a large size generator and see what kind of setup we have here's the westinghouse generator this is the 9500 slash uh 12500 we've talked about this one on the channel extensively it's had a lot of great sales recently on amazon and stuff like that and we can see the different kind of plugs that they have on here and we can see some 110s and see 220 so let's see what they got running out here so we've got to, uh, four of the 120 AC 20 amp plugs. Okay, then there's one 120 slash 240. That's an AC 30, and then an AC 50 in the 240. And again, that's the larger RV plug. And we can see when we open this up, we got the one locking in the uh, in the the 30 amp AC. To, uh, was, uh, sorry, the 120 240, and then we've got the standard big boy 50 or yeah, the 1450 here. Uh, for that one so you can run your larger rvs and such off of that all right i hope that covers most of the questions that you'll have when it comes to plugs that you're going to see in the u.s and mexico and canada if there's any plugs the, around the house kind of stuff that i didn't cover please let it uh, put a comment down below and if it and if it's a good question i'll pin it so other people can see it because other people are going to have questions and stuff like that we did not get into any of the industrial 220 kind of stuff, the higher end industrial stuff, because that's going to be really specialized. And maybe we'll do another video. If you want to see a video covering that, let me know down in the comments. By the way, when you're down there, don't forget to chomp the old like button, smash that subscribe, ring the bell on your way out. I'm your friendly neighborhood tool bear. You all take care. God bless. And as always, come on, say it with me. Shine on.